very good morning and let me thank the organizers for an excellent opportunity to spare some of my thoughts with you today and challenges i think each one of us we face challenges it's only natural but then how do we respond to these challenges one is don't face at all just run away you have no problem or find try to find solutions to these challenges and the third option in my opinion is transforming these challenges into opportunities you know in my long span of experience at the indian space research organization i think we have faced several several challenges and at least two or three i thought i should share with this august ideans how do we really overcome the challenges of course i joined somewhere in 1969 middle it was just after a week uh, neil armstrong landed on the moon and that excited me that i should go and work in this space and uh, i joined in the sleepy town of tiruvananthapuram and i went and joined you know i did my graduation and post graduation in mechanical engineering and production and joined those days it was called space science and technology center i went and reported to my boss and he spent some time and explained the whole thing look suresh there is a job waiting for you i want you to take this assignment and explain the whole lot of things it was on a control systems that i need to work i was very disappointed what is this that you are specialized in one particular area and he is asking me to work a totally different area what do i do but then i smiled but disappointed internally kept quiet came back and you know that whole afternoon and evening was very very disappointing and i was asking myself what should i do should i go and tell him it is not my area of specialization i haven't done anything in this particular area should i take it or should i continue with that i think inner conscious told that yeah you should take and then let us face the challenge i did undertake that particular challenge but you know it confused how to go about the in an area where you have absolutely no experience no subject you have studied you don't know how to proceed but then i think if you really think and find a way there is always a route available to you and you discuss went to library there were seniors with whom you can discuss discuss with them and you know this particular control system was the one which was used in our first ever launch vehicle of slv3 for which the project director was none other than dr apj abdul kalam and of course it gave an excellent opportunity for us to learn a new topic work on that and of course within 6 months i was able to put a system along with my own colleagues and you know those days vikram sarabhai our founding father he used to come almost every month and with a kurta and pajama he would come go around and we were all youngsters just raw from the college and started working in this area and we were all very eager to show something that what you had done and we would call them take to the lab and the when they started working after 6 months he came and i told to my boss that why can't you bring him i would like to show demonstrate this particular system and indeed he came he looked at it he was so pleased he put his hand on my back and patted and even today i remember that a person like sarabhai coming and appreciating your work of course that system we we tested in all our launches not only that i think that was further used in some of the defense missiles in the country you know quite happy about that but then this particular challenge and able to do it successfully gave tremendous confidence how to proceed okay what is what are the opportunities okay, of course you know one can always treat your uh, challenges in a different way how do you succeed or how do you fail depends on your own perception and of course we must always give a positive response you know that positive energy should come within us anything that you think positively i am sure that you are going to succeed 
there is nothing ever, there is no word like impossible in the dictionary. I think each one of us, we have the capability and we must have the self-confidence that we can do that. Now, you know, what happened is that how, how do we treat this as an opportunity? Because, you know, not only that I, I specialize in production manufacturing, this made me to specialize in the control systems. And an opportunity to open was those days in the somewhere in the middle 70s, there were Commonwealth scholarships to go and do your post graduation. And one condition they had put was that this should be an area which is not so easily available in the country. And those days, this control system was not so avail easily available in universities or IITs or anywhere else. And that sort of opened an avenue for me to apply, to get it, and do my PhD in UK in under Commonwealth Scholarship. And of course, you know that, although I did in mechanical and production, this opening to a totally different area of control, electronics, working in the avionics, helped me to sort of to lead an organization in the avionics subsequently for almost eight to nine years. And I would like to give yet another example of, uh, which is again exciting. You know, I was involved in one of the defense projects, defense laboratory. Of course, I, I think you, most of you may know that building a fighter aircraft, very, very complex task. And in one of the reviews at Bangalore, and uh, it was somewhere in the, uh, early 2000, and uh, what happened was that uh, they were developing very many complex systems. And I will not get into this system because that won't interest you. It's what is called an actuation system, very, very complex. And the only company which was supplying this item was somewhere in the United States of America. And these people were dependent on that. That is needed for controlling the aircraft so that you can sort of control the way you like. What happened was that, I think around that time, somewhere in 1998, there was a Falkland test. And you know there was an embargo on all items which were supplied to the India in science and technology, the equipments and all that. And the people who were getting training there, they were asked to close their shop and then they were asked to return. And while discussion, this came that, look, this has happened and they would they won't supply any more these items to the country. What do we do really? We need to really do on our own, but then it's a very complex task. The only company which is doing is the United States of America. And that's how they were able to get it, sign an agreement, and they were able to supply. Then question came, what do we do? Well, I happened to be there, and then some of our colleagues were there. We debated, discussed, said, we will take it up. What is the problem? I think we'll undertake. You know, some of the people who were there, they just laughed and said, what are you? Are you joking? In fact, one of the directors of the defense institutions, he came and advised me that when I said we will undertake, don't ever commit on these things. It is not going to happen. Not only you fail, but then the system also will not be, we will not be able to progress. But then, you know, we accepted the challenge and First of all, this, is, this was related to a defense project. And being in ISRO, you know, I, it took a lot of my effort and time to undertake this task because the organization itself is not convinced. When we have so much of work for ourselves, what is the point in undertaking a project which is no way concerned with us? Well, I told them, look, these kind of complex jobs we do for them at this point of time, I'm sure that it will open a lot of opportunities for our own programs in future. Indeed, it has come to our rescue today. You know what, when we talk about human space mission, the one that is used in fighter aircraft, it has to have a very high reliability. That means it's a very complex in terms of technical terminology, you talk in, you know, having multiple redundancies. And we did build one. And the advantage is that that required having coordination with multiple agencies all over India. And our own people with whom I was working, they were not convinced. They were telling, no, sir, why should we undertake? What do we get? I will not get my promotion, so on and so forth. But you know, I, I have a habit of talking to them, and they were able to understand, accept it. And we did build. And at the end of the day, all these people who worked with me, 
you know, they not only they got their promotion on time, some of them ahead of time, but then they were able to sort of spread their own expertise across several organizations in the country. They are all quite happy about it. You know, that is how the, the opportunities come actually. Of course, the system is ready and is awaiting for the uh, for final flight clearance and it will happen very soon. Now, you know, we need to jump at challenges. It won't come to you just like that. Sometimes this was just to demonstrate that particular point. I think if we do that, you know, it, it really empowers each one of us. We should get ourselves empowered to do many things. That is the whole idea. And of course, always, in my opinion, this kind of opportunities will be the nice platform to learn many, many things. It need not necessarily be the area that you think you have specialized. No. I think there are several opportunities available. Now, the last one I would like to give is, I think just now she said that uh, we started an institute at Tiruvanthapuram. You see, what happened was being in the space organization, uh, which is a cutting edge technology, it was very difficult to get the bright young people as the time progressed because the people who are studied in IITs or any other institute, the Indian Institute of Science, it was very difficult to get them because either they would go abroad or they go to the IT companies or many avenues opened up. And uh, we found it very difficult. And in one of the launches that we had at Sri Harikota, we have a habit of going and presenting to Prime Minister. I think it was in uh, 2003, if I'm correct, uh, we were presenting the success uh, of one of our launches where we put remote sensing satellite into the orbit. And uh, during the discussion, uh, Prime Minister, along the couple, I mean, in a, uh, across the table, he just asked the question, how are you going to handle your human resources? What are you going to do? We said, we have these difficulties, sir. We don't know how to progress. We train them. We put them on the job. Then he said, why can't you start something on your own where you give training, train them, and put them on the task? You know, this was the question raised. And uh, it appealed to us. In fact, we came back and we worked. And uh, that's why you can see that uh, somewhere in the 2007, we made a decision. And it was in April we got the approval. But the question is, when I went to Chairman Isro and uh, talked to him, he said, look, Suresh, we have to start this year itself. Somewhere in August, you should start. I was amazed. How can we start in a matter of three to four months where you know we did not have uh, a campus, we didn't have academic syllabus, none of these things were there. And he said that you should do that. Of course, when I came and told to our friends and colleagues, they said, no, no way you can do that. But then I convinced them, let us take it as a challenge and do it. And uh, of course, there are several, several things that you need to take a quick decision and act upon that. There was a training institute we had, and then we transformed into a, 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 in an institute. Of course, it took a lot of our time. And we didn't have anything. You know, the interesting part is we arranged the counseling at Bangalore. And of course, uh, we made use of the IIT list, which was available, and asked them to apply. Of course, ISRO was doing quite well at that time. And I must really appreciate the students all across the India who applied, came, and we had in one of the very nice five-star hotel the counseling that we organized very well. Mind you that where we wanted to get about 150 students, all 150 joined us. And the only thing is I'm very happy that they didn't ask where is your campus, who are your teacher. Nothing was there, actually. But then they joined us. We said that, look, somewhere in September, we are going to start the institute. We will hear from us. And similarly, that for the faculty, we did not have any faculty. You know, we started on. 14th September, but then you can see here, we sort of did the interviews at Bangalore on 6th and 8th and 20th and 23rd August. Only the difference is that we sort of gave a, 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 a order right on that spot and told them you have to join within two weeks. And 18 faculty members joined us, and we were able to proceed on that. Of course, all other things we put in place, and we did start on 14th September. We had the inauguration in the morning, and uh, in, in the afternoon, we just started the classes. So it was, it was quite a challenge to really put all of them together. Of course, uh, you know that this particular topic is well covered. 
and there is so much more being told and what is more important is to really see that we are able to do the task if we focus our activities and what we started as uh, uh, in a in an urgent manner it helped us in fact we were able to put the entire campus in a in an acre in 50 acres area mind you that within 18 months we were able to complete all buildings a ex excellent academic laboratory hostels all other uh, facilities that are needed and uh, we were able to move to the new campus within something like 24 months. And of course, it's being further expanded and it's being continued. So I'm sure that uh, the, the, the pessimist is difficult in every opportunity, whereas the optimist is opportunity in every difficulty, how well it is told. So this is the message that I would like to really convey. And you know what is important is, one can go on and on in terms of facing the challenges. But you have to treat the challenge as a game. You should not get butter at all. And enjoy the whole process as more fun, OK? As long as you consider it as a fun, I'm sure that we, we can do wonders. Always, when we when face the challenge, you know, the fear inside us, that makes us worry, actually. So facing a challenge and seeing it as an opportunity is always most welcome and don't get afraid as long as you consider it as a fun and proceed i'm sure that you would succeed there is no no possibility of coming out of that but what is important in handling this is if we want to work within our own comfort zone it's no way possible we must come out of our comfort zone and also identify what are the difficulties and give your attention to overcome those particular difficulties. Not that everything is difficult. I told you how to get teachers uh, within a span of uh, two weeks. You know, as a government department, it is not allowed to sort of give an order on that day. I took a decision, yes, we will do it, got the necessary approval within a short time. At the end of the day, we asked them to wait up to 6 o'clock and the orders were given. They were all extremely happy. We could see that some of them weeping over that, actually. So. When we come across challenges, you know, we always treat them from a perspective of helplessness or from a standpoint of personal belief. When we choose the latter, that is, in our own personal belief, we are consciously optimistic and all challenges opens a vista and vista of opportunities. So this is just to convey that challenges are there, challenges will stay, but it's only our understanding, our perception, that we are able to overcome that and trans transform these challenges into opportunities and use as an opportunity for yourself, for the society, for the benefit of the country. Thank you very much.